basically a headache is just a symptom, so that's head pain. Um, and we make the distinction in the headache world between what we call primary headache disorders and secondary headache disorders. Secondary headache disorder is when there is something that is causing that headache. Um, so, you know, the most common thing that people will think about is like a brain tumor or a stroke. Um, but it can also be more benign things like um, obstructive sleep apnea or medication overuse. A primary headache disorder is when that's just the, uh, the headache itself is actually what's the problem. And so that's really more at the cellular electrical level where there's issues with the um, the functioning of the nerves and the uh, nervous system that's then resulting in the headache rather than something extraneous that's causing it. So they are very common. Um, if we look at migraine, for example, uh, in the general population, migraine occurs in about 12% of people, so very common. Uh, more common in women uh, at about 17% and then 9% of men. So it is a really, really common disorder when we look at adults. Uh, children, um, numbers are, are almost pretty similar as far as how uh, many children are experiencing migraine type headaches and actually in the young children it's more common uh, in boys and then once they hit puberty it becomes more common in, uh, in girls. So there's a bit of a switch there of the, the sexes. So there's a distinction between medication overuse which is really just um, kind of the arbitrary assignment of a number which we believe, um, you know, depending on the medication for simple analgesics, we think that more than 15 days per month would be considered overuse. For things like opiates and triptans and combination analgesics, uh, 10 days per month we would consider overuse. But that's just the behavior of using the medication frequently. Medication overuse headache is when someone actually starts developing frequent headaches, which we define as 15 or more headache days per month, as a result of using these medications frequently. And it becomes a bit confusing when you think about it because one way is of thinking about it is, well, if I'm having more headaches, I'm going to take more medicines. Um, but really what we see is that sometimes when we pull back on those medicines and the patients start using them less, the headaches actually do start reducing. And that's you know, the best way to confirm your suspicion that someone might actually have medication overuse headache. When we look at chronic headaches, there are a number of different factors that we see um, that kind of travel along with them. One of the uh, more common is uh, various um, psychiatric conditions like depression and anxiety. Um, and that sometimes can make uh, treatment more difficult as well as other uh, general pain conditions. Um, a number of patients who have chronic headaches can also have things like fibromyalgia. Um, it's not to say that it necessarily makes treatment more difficult, but I think it takes, um, you have to take those things into consideration because treatment might not work as well if you aren't also addressing those factors. Um, if you just focus on the headache alone and don't take into consideration all the other things that are going on in the patient's life and in the patient's health, um, you do really miss an opportunity to potentially uh, change some modifiable risk factors as far as um, things that might be contributing to perpetuating their headaches and, and pain. So I think the most important thing is one, you need to uh, exclude secondary causes to make sure there isn't anything else going on. But the next most important thing is once you feel you're in the primary headache territory, is really educating the patients about what that means. Because I think a lot of the time patients feel like, you know, they've done all these tests, there's nothing wrong physically that they, you know, are aware of, but they still have the headaches and they don't understand why that's the case. And so they're told, let's say they have migraine, but they don't understand what that means. And so then they just go from doctor to doctor to doctor being told the same thing that they have migraine, but never really accepting that as the diagnosis or understanding what that diagnosis means and in some ways feeling a bit dissatisfied or like something is being missed. And so that's a really important step so that they can actually understand, kind of accept, and then um, with that education move forward feeling like they know that the treatment that they're being offered is appropriate and that not, they're not kind of being ignored or brushed aside. Um, the other important component is really understanding the magnitude 
of uh, your patient's headaches because it's not uncommon that someone will come in and say, well, I get you know four headaches per month. And that doesn't sound really bad, but when you clarify, they're just talking about the four headaches where they're bedridden, but every other day they have you know, what they call their normal headache. And really there isn't anything, there isn't a normal headache. No one should have headache. And so it's a matter of understanding what they mean by their normal headache because they're making these kind of arbitrary distinctions. They're not, they don't know in the textbook you know, what these distinctions are. And, and probably all of those days uh, you know, might be migraine, but in their mind they've defined that some of them are migraine and some of them are normal headache. And if you just talk to them about their four headache days, you're really missing an opportunity to you know, address potentially what is a bigger problem than, uh, than what they're letting you on to.